Let's move up one layer. Let's head into our container real time. And now uh, we're gonna start to, you know, get into the kind of magic of it. It's gonna be thrilling, I promise. Now, one of the things that I happen to need back at this point is, you'll remember way back at the beginning, I saved. Oh, that was so sad. Why did I do that? Bummer. Ugh, well, such is life. Um, you'll remember way back at the beginning, I held on to all of those visuals that I told you you would need to make. So now is when we're gonna get those. So in my case, I'm just gonna copy paste them right over here and get rid of them. And again, right, you, this part is your homework. This is what you've gotta do without me. That you're gonna set up in each one of these a unique render network and you can use any post-process effects that you want or don't want that's your call um, I would encourage you to practice instancing or practice your post-process effects practice any of the things that we've looked at so far but you're gonna set up uh, several unique render networks and you need to make sure that all of them end with a null called the null underscore final I cannot stress that enough you'll see why in a second i promise okay so let's go ahead and swap this back to being a da -da 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 panel there we go oh look at that it's so beautiful we're doing such lovely work i'm so excited uh let's go ahead and just grab our container visuals and drag it over here and we can squish that a little bit not too much but a little bit um because that's that'll let us kind of see what we're doing here. I'm going to navigate back into container visuals, container real time, and in here I've got all of my bases. All of your base are belong to us, and I'm just going to like let them hang out. Don't worry, we'll get back to them in just one second. It's going to be great. Don't worry. We're going to add a container. I know it's containers and containers and containers day. We're going to add a container in here, and I happen to know that I want it to be our parents' dimensions, which is 852 by 670. Excellent. All right. So we need to do our first tricksy thing. I mean, we're going to do lots of really tricksy fun things, but we've got a really good tricksy fun thing that we're going to uh, start with. And what we're going to start with is we're going to start with a, uh, a little bit of practice writing a for loop. And we're going to write a for loop because we want to be kind of automate a process that would be uh, frustrating to do otherwise. So what I want to have here, right, you'll remember if we took a look at what we had, is I want to have a little button that represents each one of our visuals. That's, I want that. It's gonna be beautiful. I can't wait, I need it. Um, but I don't wanna be cooking this stuff all the time. Now there are some clever ways I could kind of get around that um, by locking operators or doing a few other kind of tricksy things. Um, but that wouldn't necessarily be the most efficient practice um, for one thing. And for another thing, it's gonna, it's got kind of several cumbersome kind of elements to it. Uh, and, to be totally honest, I want us to practice our for loops and see where we might use them and why they're good for us to kind of know a little bit more about. Okay, so what does that look like? 